Partial Post Regulation. A post office states the following regulation for a cylindrical partial. The combined length and girth must be 110 inches. Determine the dimension that maximize the volume. So we have a picture. So this is a cylindrical partial. Uh, the length, the length is easy to interpret, right? So this is the length. And then what about the girth? The girth, they are talking about the circumference of a circle. So one thing that they want is the combined length and girth must be 110 inches. So the girth, so this is the girth, one circle plus the length must be 110 inches. And then we are trying to maximize the volume. So since you are trying to maximize the volume, then the volume is your primary function. So let's determine the primary function. Uh, the primary function is a uh, volume, right? So this is a uh, volume equals to you. Uh, the area of a circle which is pi r square and then you multiply the length which is equals to l so this is in terms of two variables r and l so let's use let's figure out the secondary because of the volume we can only put this in terms of one variable so for the secondary just take the regulation the combined length and girth must be 110 inches so let's figure out the girth first so the girth is the circumference of one circle, right? So the curve is circumference. So how do you find the circumference? The circumference is 2 pi r. It's pi times times 2 times radius. 2 times radius, that gives you the diameter, right? So diameter times pi is the circumference of a circle. And then what about the length? The length is equals to L. That is equals to 110, right? Let's put this in terms of L. So we have L equals to 110 minus 2 pi r so that is your l and then i'm going to plug in the secondary to my primary so now the primary uh, is no longer just a v now it's v of r function v and then r is the independent variable that is pi r square times 110 minus 2 pi r okay and then uh let's dis distribute so v of r that is equals to 110 times pi times r square minus 2 pi square r to the third power 2 pi square r to the third power okay first step is the graph and the labels remember when you solve an optimization problem sketching the graph and labeling the graph that is your responsibility 99 percent of the time the problem won't give you a graph unless the graph is super complicated then they will give you a graph but most of the time you don't get a graph and then step two is the primary function primary function is what the question is asking for and then the secondary is what is given so you state the secondary and then plug in the secondary to primary so make sure the primary is in terms of one variable and then the next step is you will take the derivative right okay let's take the derivative so the derivative we have a uh, v prime of r so we have v prime of r that is equals to bring the two down. So we have 210 pi r and then bring the three down. So we have two times three equals to six pi square and then r to the second power. Uh, we are not touching the pi square because the pi square is a constant. Oh, one, oh what, one thing to remind you, when you use the pi, pi is a constant and pi is a pi don't use 3.14, all right? Pi is a pi, do not use 3.14. You use the pi straight all the way to the end. So now we took the first derivative and then what, what do we do? Oh, by the way, what is this step called? What, what are we trying to do? Uh, let's move this down and then I will stay step four. So step four is you take the derivative and then you find the critical number. So step four is derivative and critical number. So to find the critical number, you have to set the first derivative equals to zero. Uh, the reason of setting that equals to zero is because what are we trying to do? We are trying to maximize the volume, right? So let's say we have this parabola and then uh, this point is the maximum, right? What else can you say at this point? At this point, the maximum, the slope at that point, the slope of the parabola at the maximum point is equals to zero. Slope equals to zero means we have a horizontal tangent line. So since the horizontal tangent line has a zero slope, that's why you have to set the first derivative equals to zero. Okay, so let's get rid of this.
and then uh, set that equals to zero. So we have to solve for r, right? So I am trying to factor out something first. So let's factor out a 2 pi r. So let's factor out a 2 pi r. And then 220 divided by 2 is 110. Pi r is factored out. And then 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we took 1 pi out and then we took 1 r out. That is equals to 0. So we have 2 pi r equals to 0. This is using the zero product property. r is equals to 0. And then 110 minus 3 pi r equals to 0. So r, what is r equal to 110 is equals to 3 pi r. So r is equals to 110 divided by 3 pi. This is the critical number that we are looking for. So that is the radius. Then this is also the critical number. And then the next step is we have to prove that the volume function has a absolute maximum at this critical number. So let me remind you one more time where you have pi or a square root in in the uh, critical numbers, you have to keep that all the way to the end. Do not approximate, especially when you are doing homework online. Do not approximate. If that is a pi, then you use pi straight to the end. All right, so the next step is we have to prove that when r is equal to that quantity, there is an absolute maximum, right? So this problem, I am not going to use um, Actually, you know what? This problem, I am not going to use the second derivative. I am going to use the uh, I'm going to use the domain because in the two previous two problem, I already used the second derivative. So let's uh, use the domain. So this is step five. We have to find absolute maximum, right? Absolute maximum using the um, using the domain. So to to find the domain. Here is one thing that you have to think of. If, if the length is equal to zero, so that is the smallest possible length, right? If length is equal to zero, uh, what, is the, what is the r do we get? So when the length is minimized, then we have the biggest possible r, right? So we have 2 pi r and then plus zero equals to 110. This is the secondary function. And then what is r equals to r is equals to 110 divided by 2 pi. So that is equals to uh, 55 divided by pi. So this is the biggest possible r, right? Then the domain of function v, this is r is between zero and 55 divided by pi. And then you have to plug this into the volume function to show that when r is equal to the quantity in the circle, we have a absolute maximum. All right, so let's do the work. So let's sketch a table and then r, and then uh, we have zero, and then 110, 110 divided by 3 pi, and the maximum is 55 divided by pi, right? So when r is equal to zero, what is v of zero? So the volume function, uh, where is the volume function? The volume function is right over here. So when r is equal to zero, the volume is equal to zero, right? So the volume is equal to zero. And then when r is equal to 11, 110 divided by 3 pi, so you have to do this, you do 110 pi and then times 110 divided by 3 pi and then square minus 2 pi square times 110 over 3 pi to the third power. This one you can use an approximation that is approximately equals to 156.91.4 uh, Eight four six. Let me make sure this is right. One five six nine one point four nine eight four six. And then when r is equal to fifty five divided by pi, the volume is equal to zero. So therefore, there is an absolute maximum when x is equal to one ten divided by three pi. Uh, can you use the second derivative test? The answer is absolutely yes. So you can use the second derivative test and you will come up with the same answer. So if you are using the second derivative test, let me just write this down. So if you are using the second derivative test, and then you will be getting a double prime, right? So a double prime, and then uh, and then v equals to whatever that is, and then at r equals to 110 divided by 3 pi, so this one, in order to get a maximum, this must be less than zero, right? So you have a corn, you have a concave down, and then at this point, you have a maximum. This is what you will get using the second derivative test. Uh, the second derivative test, I like it 
because you don't have to think about the domain but if you got a problem let's say a uh, in-class written exam and your instructor is asking you to figure out the domain then this is what you have to learn i usually divide up an optimization problem into multiple sub problem into multiple steps so i can give partial credits to my student so if you are asked to find the domain then you have to do the tough job to in, in my opinion using the domain is more complicated Okay, using the second derivative test is more straightforward. But if you're asked to use the domain, then you have to follow the direction. Okay, so let's finish this problem. So we have, what, what do we have? The final, final answer. So we have r equals to 110, right? Divided by 3 pi. So when r is equals to this, the volume is maximized. So this one is approximately 11.67 inches. But when you are doing homework online, they only accept the whole answer right the, the exact answer and then how do you figure out the, the length so to figure out the length you have to use the secondary function 2 pi r plus l equals to 110 so you have 2 pi r right so 110 divided by 3 pi and then plus l equals to 110 and then this one is a 220 divided by 3 right the pi got cancelled plus l equals to 110 and then L is equals to 110 minus 220 divided by 3. That is equals to 110 divided by 3. So this is the length. And then for your reference, this is approximately equals to 36.67. I believe that they, they use inches, right? Di? Yep. So this will be uh, inches and then this will be uh, inches. And then uh, what about the, the volume? The volume is equals to pi r square, right? r square. So that is 110 divided by 3 pi. And then square times the length. The length is uh, 110 divided by 3. Of course, you will get an exact answer. So you will get an exact answer. And then that is approximately equals to something. And then what's the unit? The unit is in cubic inches, right? Inch and then you write 3 cubic inches. Okay, so that is the end of this video. Do you like it? Is this helpful? If so, give me a like, share, and subscribe. Highly appreciate your help, and I will see you all in the next lesson. Signing off.